This is Grady with Triple Z Resale coming at you with another What Sold on eBay video. So it's been three weeks since I did a What Sold on eBay video and um, I've had a lot of good sales. So I'm going to show you a selection of things from both of my stores. We're going to start off with some uh, ancient artifacts, vintage and antique items, and then we will move on to a collection of uh, designer eyeglass cases and um, we'll finish off with some clothing from my Fashion Meets Function store. So here we go. What sold on eBay? This has been one of my absolute all-time favorite items to sell. I'm a huge fan of uh, pre-Columbian things and Native American items. It's not my specialty as far as like, that's not like exclusively what I sell, but just on a personal level, it's a huge interest of mine and living in the Southwest United States, um, there is a lot of Native American and uh, like South American tribal stuff that I come across. So this is a possibly pre-Columbian Olmec hunchback figurine. So the Olmecs were the first, um, really the first highly organized civilization in, um, in, in the Western continent, in like in North South America. So uh, the Olmecs were down in uh, Southern Mexico, like down by Guatemala and Belize in that area, Central America and the very, um, you know, Eastern tip of, of Mexico. And they were um, an incredible civilization. They made amazing art. They had interesting culture. So I was at an estate sale uh, that had really interesting stuff. It was an eclectic artisan type person here in Tucson. And um, they had a whole collection of pre-Columbian pottery. And they also had this stone figurine, which the second I saw it, I grabbed it off the table. Um, out of respect for the buyer, I'm not going to say what I paid for it, but it was very little. I got, a, I got this at a good price. And um, I knew right away that this was either a genuine item or a high quality reproduction of an ancient artifact. So I got home. I talked to two members of my family who are very knowledgeable about pre-Columbian pieces. We did some research. They helped me figure this out. And ultimately, I ended up with this book, which I borrowed from my mother-in-law, about the Olmecs. So the Olmecs are um, best known for these large stone heads that they carve, but they did a lot of smaller things also, including a lot of figurines. So this is the type of figurines that they carved. This is a stone called serpentine, which is a green stone. It's not jade. It's different, um, although it does have some similar qualities to jade, and jade was also in this region. So this serpentine stone is what this uh, figurine is made out of. So I love having research books available because uh, when you have actual antiques or really rare items, uh, the research books really come in handy. So through a combination of using that book, uh, doing online research, and talking to two family members who understand and can identify pre-Columbian pieces, I knew that this was um, either a pre-Columbian piece or a very good um, replication of one, and that it was made out of serpentine stone, and that this is very consistent with items that come from that region in Mexico. So it's unlikely that this was made in China and then you know resold as uh, like a fake piece. So um, this was either dug out of the ground from, from an uh, architectural site or this was reproduced by a craftsperson. But either way, this is a very high quality piece. So let's check out some pictures. So I did a very thorough job of photographing this because um, because someone's not able to physically touch it, it's really, really important that they feel comfortable with, uh, you know, all, all of the, the pictures of this image and that they feel like they understand what they're getting. So in the listing description, I say that the ownership history of this item is not available. Basically, this is not authenticated. There's no certificate of authenticity that this is a genuine pre-Columbian piece because if this is real, this piece is about 2,400 years old or older. So um, 
I listed it at $195 on auction. Uh, I ran it for one week on auction. It didn't sell. I had about five watchers. I ran it a second time at auction and it got one bid and sold to someone in Santa Fe uh, for this price. Um, and they may have bought this in order to resell it. If this is a genuine piece, it's worth about 10 times this price. It's worth about $2,000, somewhere, well, somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000, I should say. It seems like genuine ones were selling between one and $2,000 based on my research. So you may be wondering why I didn't sell this for a higher price. And that's a good, that's a good valid question. It's possible I could have gotten more money. I could have listed this at 800 or $1,000 and I could have waited and I could have tried to sell it. But here's the challenge is that I'm not willing to say this is authentic. And the ones that are selling for that price, the people are saying they're authentic items, meaning that they are genuine um, pre-Columbian. And those people may not know, they might just be saying that it is and they're just playing a confidence game. But I'm not willing to do that. I wanna run an ethical business. And so basically I indicated that this is believed to be an authentic piece, um, but that the ownership history is unknown. So, um, Based on what I paid for it, selling it for $195 is an extremely good profit. And so I'm happy that it sold. And um, hopefully this item is going in someone's collection. And if someone's gonna resell it, I'm perfectly fine with that. I hope they make a good profit on their investment. So this is a uh, uh, Victorian era women's cotton slip. So this is like the dress that goes under the fancy dress. This is the slip. Um, this thing is in pretty bad condition. It's from probably the late 1800s. But here's what I thought was really interesting about it is that it has this name uh, written into the seam, like the waist seam. And it looks like it says maybe Jasmine or Jamie Thompson. So if you'll notice, I put the word genealogy and Thompson in the title. And the reason the reason for that is, is that there are a lot of people out there who do genealogy research and are looking for items from specific families. And so um, this may have sold to someone just simply because of the genealogy connection and the fact that it's from a certain era. It's unlikely that this is gonna be used. It has a lot of stains um, and it was in kind of rough condition. But again, this is an interesting piece. It's not something you come across every day. And I'm glad I was able to properly identify it and list it and sell it. And it sold for $30 plus shipping. All right, this was a fun one. Um, this is two vintage garrison hats. Uh, one is probably from the Vietnam era and one is more modern, like maybe from the 80s or something like that. And uh, I sold it for $12.95 with free shipping. I think I paid a uh, dollar for both of the hats. All right, here's another vintage military item. This is a lot of 19 World War II US Navy buttons. So let me show you one of the buttons so you can see the anchor design on it. So um, uh, when I bought a yard sale a couple of years ago, I bought like an entire yard sale. You can go check that video out, it's a fun one. Um, one of the things that was in there was this old pea jacket, this World War II era pea jacket. So it's this big, heavy blue wool jacket with all these buttons on it. And it was a really cool jacket, but it was in terrible condition. And um, it weighed like, I don't know, eight pounds or something. It's back when clothes were like really thick and heavy because it's made out of wool and like, you know, uh, burlap and stuff like that, or canvas. Um, and so uh, I actually, what I ended up doing was just saying, uh, I'm just gonna cut all the buttons off of this. So I took all of the buttons off and sold them separately. And the buttons weighed like, you know, two ounces. There was, you know, $3 shipping versus selling the jacket was gonna cost someone like, you know, $20 or more to ship. Um, and so someone bought all of the buttons, which are, you know, vintage 1940s. And there's small ones and large ones. And I just think it's really cool because like, what are they gonna do with this? Like, I'm really curious what craft project this person is getting up to. Are they gonna end up on a contemporary piece of clothing? Is it gonna be something historical? Is it gonna be an art project and not a fashion project? I don't know. But they sold for 19.95 with free shipping. All right, this is something I always wanted to sell. It's not highly valuable, but I just really, really have always liked this china. And before I was an eBay seller, I had one of these, before I was an eBay seller, I had one of these teacups uh, in my home collection that I'd bought at a thrift store and I really liked it. It has this like this like hollowed out, um, these like hollowed out heart shapes on it. It has this beautiful, beautiful green crackle glaze. And then there's this like brown slip painting design on it, over it. 
Um, this is very classically Japanese. I know ceramics and pottery quite well, and this is just a classically Japanese style piece. It has uh, these horses painted on it in gold. It's got just the beautiful crackle. So what happens with the, with the crackle glaze is that as it's firing, the glaze uh, chemicals turn into glass and the glass cracks and then all the carbon that's in the that's in the kiln uh, gets trapped in the cracks of the glass and so that's what creates that black crackle design um, you can see that it has it stamped on the bottom in Japanese and so this was a set of uh, 18 pieces um, I bought these at a church rummage sale I paid uh, 25 cents per piece so um, Basically, I paid a few dollars for this, and I was patient, and I think I took a best offer of $65, so I gave them $15 off the price, and they paid for shipping, and I was really happy to sell this. I've always wanted to sell a set of Somiyaki Japanese stoneware, and I finally got to, so hopefully I'll find another one someday and sell another set. I think this stuff is really neat. All right, this is a, a poster. I sold this yesterday. I listed this and it sold within four hours for $89.95. I went to an estate sale warehouse here in town. It was my first time there. It was a really amazing place. Um, and maybe I'll do a haul video from there sometime. But I bought five of these posters from John August Swanson, who is a very, very well-known artist out of Los Angeles. Um, He's a Mexican-American artist, and a lot of his art has to do with social commentary and social justice type things. So um, a lot of his more modern art is, is um, less biblical and more on the social justice end, but some of his stuff from this time period in like the 80s and 90s, um, a lot of it was biblical, so it's like stories from the Bible. And you can see that this uh, is from the First United Methodist Church of Los Angeles, and it's kind of a uh, dated piece. I think it's from 1994. Let's see, let's see if I can find the age. All right, I don't have the age. So I made sure to put First United Methodist Los Angeles in the title, along with the artist's name and the name of the art piece, which the title of this art piece is Castronets. And um, I think this may have sold because maybe there's people looking for things from the Methodist Church or the Methodist Church of Los Angeles. I imagine it's a very big and well-known church because Los Angeles is one of our major cities. And um, if this is the first United Methodist Church, church of Los Angeles, it's probably a big institution. And I was really happy to see this sell. You can see I have a whole uh, biography of the artist in the uh, in the listing so I have like five of these posters for sale this is the first one to sell and the nice thing about if you're selling art I suggest putting a bio of the artist in there for a couple of reasons for one people are curious about artists they like to know what they're buying they they really have to feel passionate about art in order to buy it because no one really needs art you might buy printer ink because you need it but you're not going to buy art because you need it because you need it. You're going to buy art because you really love it and you want it. So uh, two reasons to do this, uh, to put the bio in. One is that people get to learn about the artist and that may help them buy in. The other thing is that this biography is full of words, full of keywords, full of words that people may be searching for that Google may pick up on or that eBay will you know, use. Even though it's not in the title, um, if there's words in the description, it, it still will, should have an effect on, on its search ranking. And you can see that there are so many words in this. And literally, this is from uh, the artist website, johnaugustswanson.com, I think. And this is from the About page. So I just copied and pasted it in, in here. And... Um, you know, that helped sell this item. So it sold for $89.95 with the buyer paying shipping and I'm gonna send it out today. This was a fun one. I bought two pairs of roller skates in an online auction. I paid $5 for this item. They are men's roller derby roller skates. They actually are my size. I wear a size 11 shoe. So I did put these on and roller skate around the house and like, you know, my kids were like laughing at me and stuff. I have wood floors. So I was like trying to zoom around and look all fancy and they thought it was hilarious. And then I cleaned them up and I sold them on eBay. So that's great, $50 plus the buyer paid for shipping. Thanks buyer. All right, now we're gonna check out a collection of uh, sunglass cases and glasses cases. So I went to this estate sale warehouse and 
I was walking around outside and amongst the miscellaneous junk, there was two cardboard boxes full of glasses cases. And the, the person told me that, um, uh, one of their donors is like some nonprofit that like gives out eyeglasses or something like that, or some kind of gla retail, like, you know, eyeglass business or something like that. And they donated two boxes of, um, glasses cases. And I start digging through it and I'm seeing all these designer names. I'm seeing Prada, I'm seeing Tiffany, I'm seeing Dulce and Gabbana. And they're 50 cents each for these things. So I literally didn't even look up, I didn't even do research. I just said, you know what? I know these are gonna sell. I know these are gonna sell for a decent price compared to the purchase price of 50 cents. So I dug through those bins and I probably pulled out, um, I think I bought 27 of these because I paid 13 50 so I think I bought 27 designer name brand eyeglasses cases and so I took something that cost for this lot it cost me $13.50 and I have listed more than $400 worth of these cases that does include free shipping so if you take the free shipping out um, you know it's still like over $300 in sales that I'm gonna get once all of these have sold so that was a great turnaround so I have sold a bunch of them. They started selling literally the day I listed them, they started selling. So here's one from Dulce & Gabbana that sold for $14.95 uh, with free shipping. You can see uh, in the photos, I am very uh, careful to get the pure white background and to make them look beautiful because these are people who are buying designer stuff. They want designer pictures. They want, they want, they want you know, high end, uh, like high end looking things. And so I made sure to give them that experience. Here's a beautiful Tiffany & Co with this great turquoise with like a patent leather uh, outside. Um, and then let's see, here's Gucci. I've sold a few Gucci items in my time. I'm not super into designer name brand stuff. That's not really like like my, my passion is design designer name brand stuff. But this has been fun to sell designer name brand things. So here's a Gucci one. That one sold right away. I think I took a best offer of $20. And um, here's a Prada one. had a little bit of damage on the back, but it's still sold $9.95 with free shipping. I think that's a good deal for someone. So I've sold a bunch more of them, but those are all the ones I'm going to show you from this collection for now. Um, keep an eye out for those eyeglass cases. If you get them at a good price, they definitely uh, will sell. All right. Also at that same estate sale where I bought the eyeglasses cases, I bought five Scully men's Western vests. Now, if you don't know Scully, if you're into selling clothes, you're, you're, you're into scavenging for clothes, always keep an eye out for Scully. It has sold for me 100% of the time, generally at very good prices. Even a plain, simple Scully shirt is still worth, um, you know, probably at least $20. So um, the couple of the vests were in rough condition. And so those ones I'm selling for 29, the ones that are in really good condition, I'm selling for 39.95. And um, I took a best offer on this blue one of 25. Um, this one sold for full price at $29.95. So, uh, and I've got three more left to go. So keep an eye out for Scully. It's a great brand. Here's the logo. I'll show you the, uh, hold on. Let me show you the, uh, let me show you the tag. So you know what I'm talking about here. All right. That's generally what the Scully tag looks like. All right. So here's a cool item. I don't generally sell motocross stuff. Um, but I was at Savers thrift store and I found this signed motocross jersey and it has multiple signatures on it um you can see there's one two and then there's one on the shoulder that's three so i think there's a total of three signatures on it uh, i did some research before i bought this to look up like the axo team and um you know like see if i could identify any of these signatures and i wasn't able to identify one of them as this guy tony caroli and he is a well-known motocross uh, athlete i guess um so I paid more for this than I normally would for a shirt. Like typically for a shirt at a thrift store, I'm only looking to pay like two or three dollars. I think I paid eleven dollars for this item, um, and it took about three months to sell. I took a best offer of thirty-five dollars plus they paid for shipping. So uh, I did give them a discount. I didn't make as much money on this as I'd hoped to, but uh, I still made a decent profit, about uh, three times what I paid for it. So. Um, Plus, it's cool to sell signed stuff. I like selling, you know, like memorabilia, and this definitely falls into the category of being a memorabilia item. All right, this is a very local item. Um, 
this is a shirt from the San Javier Mission, which is this. This it's a Spanish mission, um, just south of Tucson. It's on the Tohono O'odham Reservation, and um, Indian Reservation. And this is just a beautiful shirt, and it shows like the traditional, uh, like a traditional dancing ceremony, and um, you know it shows the guys in the in the like the cowboy hats and the kind of western wear, and that's actually how people look out here in Tucson. Like you know, if you see a Native American person out at the reservation, like they will look like that. Like they'll be wearing a cowboy hat and, you know, boots. And you see the ladies over here, um, like under the little, uh, like awning and they're making fry bread. And when, when you go out to the mission, there's almost always a fry bread stand that looks just like that. And you can buy this delicious fry bread, um, from the, from the vendors. And, um, you know, it has the quail and the suaros and the ocotillo cactus and, you know, the century plant. And, and I know I'm going off on like a random Tucson tangent here. So this probably doesn't make sense to a lot of you, but just symbolically speaking, this really represents my region of the world. And I'm very proud of, of, you know, Southern Arizona. We have a very unique culture and very diverse culture here. And so this shirt just to me was really beautiful. And so I grabbed it out of the Goodwill bins. It still had the tags on it. Um, and I was just happy to sell it. Like, I just wanted to sell this because I loved it. I don't care, like, if I made money or not. And, you know, I made, it sold for 16 bucks. So after fees, I mean, I'm making like $8 or something. It's not a huge sale. But I just, I just really like this item. So I wanted to share that with you. Um, all right. This is something that I bought at a bag sale. So I filled up a bag of clothing for $5. And this was just one of the many, many items that I uh, got out of that bag. This is a... Um, Winnie the Pooh Halloween themed uh, women's denim shirt and they're there it seemed like this was worth about $30 I think I was trying to get 50 for it because Halloween was coming up and I just knew that somebody would want this and sure enough I got an offer for $30 best offer from a lady who said I see these shirts all the time and I've always wanted one, but they're always in smaller sizes because I think this one was like a large or an extra large. And so she said, I hope you'll accept my offer. And I did. There we go. Extra large. Yeah. Um, and it's from the Disney catalog brand and this sold like, I think within a week of listing it. So that was a good sale. All right. I'm going to end on showing you two different belts just because they're fun. I mean, I know belts aren't super exciting, but I just thought that the print on this Brooks Brothers one was really cool with the lobster and the blue crab. I thought, you know, someone who lives out on the East Coast will want this because both of those sea creatures are kind of like East Coast uh, out on the Atlantic. Um, and sure enough, it sold to someone on the East Coast. Uh, I think they made me a best offer of $17 and I took it because I probably paid a dollar for this belt. Um, and I just thought it was neat and it's Brooks Brothers. So it's not only is it neat, but it's, you know, it's name brand. There's the Brooks Brothers like in, uh, logo stamped into the backside of the leather. And then I'm going to show you a very similar belt. This is a similar belt from LL Bean. So not quite as high end of a company. Um, but basically they sold for the same price. This one sold for six, 17, almost $17. And it had uh, black labs on it, which I just thought was such a neat belt. Uh, it had like the D-ring closure, so it's kind of a, kind of a simple belt. But um, I just thought this was a cool item. Again, I probably paid a dollar for it. And they both sold on the same day within an hour of each other, which I thought was interesting because they, because they are so similar. So this has been a selection of items from my eBay stores. Thank you for checking this out. Hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel. I'm going to have a bunch more content coming out. And thanks for checking out this video. Have a great day.